Yo ho ho sha! What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and I'm here with some more weekly Shrippum story time with set three of the One Piece card game, Pillars of Strength. <clears throat> I think that's what it's called in the English version. I don't know what the Japanese version is called. Um, but I'm going to be doing two boxes per week. So I'm spoiled by the English boxes now. I feel like I'm used to seeing that many alt arts in one opening. So I want to deliver that to you guys. And I think I'm going to do this in a two part six part series so the first three week the next three weeks are going to be two boxes per week and i'm going to tell the story of my creative journey i thought maybe it could be inspiring and exciting for people and um the next three weeks i'll do something else i don't know but um if this is your first time here if you push that subscription button it'd be really cool if you did if you're a returning member Thanks for coming by. I really appreciate it. And let's get into some One Piece card game content. So this is uh, set three. I just got my cases last week. I did a live stream opening and I had a crazy box where I uh, I opened an ace alt art and the ace uh, the fire fist alt art. That was a hype, hype box. But anyway, like I said, I, you know, more recently I've, I found it's more sustainable for me and fun if on YouTube I just kind of tell stories i have lots of stories and of course we got a bless my pack oh pack them be blessed um i have a lot of fun telling these stories and people are taking uh well to the stories that i tell so i'm uh gonna kind of keep up with that approach so i wanted to talk a little bit about my uh oh also if this is your first time here i just go i just go to the last card i'm not going to show all the cards if you want to see all the cards you can go Check out some other YouTube content creators that go through all the cards and discuss them. I also don't really know what a lot of the skills do in this set. I just haven't been able to keep up with the English and Japanese. I'm, you know, I'll figure it out by the time the English stuff comes out. Ooh, Luchi SR. But, um, yeah, so I wanted to tell the story of my creative journey. I, I'm an individual that makes a lot of things. And I kind of have this theory that I think everybody in the world is better at making something than everybody else. I think everybody has a, has an amazing talent in one area that can make them make something that's cooler than everybody else in the world, but the likelihood that you find that thing is low. So creatively, you know, you have to be willing to make the mistakes to get yourself to that place on your creative journey. And you have to try enough things and put enough different combinations of things together so that you end up finding that thing that you're nastier at than anyone else in the world. Um, the, the best way to do that is uh, to create a combination of things that you do or things that you make, put them together in a way that nobody else is doing it. Um, there's a couple of things that I've managed to do in my lifetime so far that are unique to, I love this art, this art's so good, that are unique to the way that I do it and I haven't ever heard of anybody else doing that. Um, so. I just kind of wanted to tell my story of how I got here and you know where I'd like to go and so on and so forth. So uh, it all kind of started when I was young. My my mom is from India and my dad's a Jewish guy from New Jersey. And you know the concept of identity has been something that I've struggled with um, my whole life and in a good way. I think um, I've kind of come to just create my own identity. I, I don't really like people labeling me. I feel like I have a, a decent idea of who I am, but I don't understand everything about myself or the world. So I don't really want people to be able to make those assumptions about me. And that's kind of why I dress the way I dress and do the things I do is because I just think, you know, everybody's different and unique. And I enjoy my differentness and uniqueness a lot at this point in my life. And I hope to inspire other people to find that about themselves as well. Um, when I was really young, I, I started probably the first thing I started making like well. I mean, I always really liked art class. Art class was always the class where I was most excited to go, continue working on whatever I was working on. I've generally liked the things that I make, even when they're not totally great, because it's always kind of a sign that you're going embarking on a new creative adventure or whatever it is that you're going to be making so um i always really liked art class and the thing that i think that i started making well first oh sr poly i like this art a lot i like how they made his goggles holographic that was a good call um i started crocheting hats when i was like 12 or 13 or something like that and um the hats were pretty good and people liked them um but there were 
some of my friends that wanted to buy them and I asked them how much they wanted to buy the hats for and they would say like 20 bucks or something like that and I was thinking about how much time it took me to make the hat and it was you know something like nine hours and at the time you could buy a full-size sandwich at my favorite sandwich store for like four bucks so the profits I would have been able to buy myself a full-size hoagie every day and eat half for lunch and half for dinner but I didn't know how I was gonna feed my family and then I realized you know hey uh, my mom was the one that bought me the yarn, so maybe I should just do her job, and then I can buy my kid yarn, and then there'll be a never-ending line of dentists. Ooh, there's the Sanji alt dawn. Um, but yeah, that's just kind of a ridiculous fifth grader's mind rationalizing through the process of what to do in life. But it, the thing that was important, I think, that I picked out from this was that I realized that I don't like selling my art. It's not something that I want to spend my time doing. I think for me, creatively, I really like making stuff and I'm very particular about the things that I like. I, I, I think this struggle with identity made me realize that there's stuff that I like more than other stuff. And um, we should be coming up on an alt art here pretty soon. Almost done with the packs in this box. But um, yeah, I'm, I really like specific things and uh, a lot of those things don't exist in the world. So as an artist, it's kind of, your job to make those things if they're not out there so more people can enjoy them. And that's really the perspective and approach I've taken with a lot of the stuff that I've done in my life creatively. I, th I feel like we're gonna get a secret in this box. I think this is gonna be a Saga King secret. And it's in the Blessum, it's in the Blessum. This is an alt art. I Blessum the alt or secret. It's a secret or an alt art. I feel like it's a secret. I feel like it's a secret Saga King. That's my guess. And we're about to find out. It is, oh, yo, Don Krieg, or that's not Krieg, that's, uh, what's his name? Jin, yeah, Jin. I really wanted to see this in person. This alt is sick. I'm so glad to have pulled this. Yes, very, very cool. At this point for the Japanese stuff, I really just like want a copy of each card for my collection, because I'm not really playing with the Japanese cards as much, but yo, fire pull. I think this art is so cool. He looks so tough getting the heck beaten out of him. Wow, what an amazingly shiny, cool card. And that's one box, so we still got another box. I just started getting into this story anyway. Um, so I kind of realized that like, you know, I really like making things. It's an enjoyable way to spend my time. It feels like I have a value in that time because I can look back at the thing that I made and say, oh yeah, I spent you know this time making this thing and now I have this as evidence that I existed for this amount of time and made this stuff here's our next box next to boxel um so it started with these hats and uh later i started getting really into like marvel actually i've been in i was into marvel stuff pretty heavy since i was like pretty young um and i used to really like the art from comic books my dad was really into comic books when he was a kid my brother was really into comic books when he was young let's see if i can bless him like a g again bless him oh shrip him be bless him and uh yeah so i started drawing like marvel characters on cloth t-shirts and stuff and i would take that cloth and then i would sew it onto bandanas so i have all these like bandanas from when i was a kid with like these drawn pictures of like iron man and daredevil and uh i don't know thanos whatever characters that i just thought were like cool and i would wear those bandanas around and that's kind of the first like outside of the hats, that's the next sort of article of thing that I started making. And when I got into high school, um, I really started wanting to get more into like making t-shirts. So I started taking uh, clear transparencies. Mama, mama! I started taking clear transparencies and um, putting like a black and white stencil image behind it and then cutting those out with an uh, X-Acto knife and then taking spray paint and spray painting. Ooh, this is something nice here. He ho, our boy, we're boys again. This art is so sick. I pulled one of these already, but this is a really, really cool looking card. Maybe I can trade it to somebody that might have something else that I want. I just think the foiling is so sick and you can really see like the power of Fujitora. I feel like this is a real gravity card, like the angle that they picked for the perspective and everything, it just, super cool card there could still be i think there could still be an alt wanted or something i don't know what the ratios are in here but i'm gonna keep opening these packs because i only got it i got enough to 
keep opening and I want to have sets so I can play test a little bit with it. But yeah, so um, I started spray painting on these t-shirts and when I got into high school, uh, I mean, when I got into college, one of my friends showed me like a screen printed shirt and I was like, wow, this is, this is like kind of like what I was doing with the spray paint, but it's like way more controlled. And then he showed me the press and I was like, I can make how many things at that quickly? So I started um, silk screening a ton of stuff. And in, in, uh, in undergrad, I picked a major that I thought would help me with dentistry. So I decided to be a studio art major because I've watched my mom do dentistry for years. I've worked in the office since I was a kid. And um, the sort of dexterity feats I'd seen her accomplish with her hands was just so totally amazing that I, you know, I knew that I, if I wanted to be a dentist that was as good as her, then I needed to be able to do those feats myself. So I started, um, I decided to be an art major and I only took art classes that I thought overlapped with stuff that I would do in the dental office. And it worked out for me also because I really like art. So um, I was able to, you know, do something that I liked while preparing myself for what I wanted to do in my profession. So I started screen printing and I just like totally fell in love with it. And the correlation I found between screen printing and dentistry is looking at a screen and evaluating where like lost pixels are or where they place you need to put tape or where you might need to edit your design. Um, that's similar to reading x-rays. You know, the stuff you look for in x-rays, it's the same sort of way that you have to train your eye to look for something. So I screen printed probably like 20,000 things when I was an undergrad. I was making shirts all the time. I was just totally addicted to like making shirts I made all sorts of funny stuff, silly things, interesting things. I did a whole Hindu God series where I screen printed Hindu gods onto t-shirts. But I had a lot of fun doing that. And um, when I was a senior in undergrad, I was up in San Francisco and I went into this shop that had this like crazy cool clothing that was like the most wildly shiny, psychedelic, loud, cool, fun, exciting stuff I'd ever seen. And I was talking to the lady that um, owned the store and I was like, hey, I got this uh, trunk full of screen printed t-shirts and you know, I might be somebody one day, like you wanna trade for some shirts towards the shirts? And she was like, I'm sorry, like I wish I could, but this art's so good. She's like, I wish I could, but we make everything here and we kind of, you know, we need to sell what we make so we can keep making stuff. And, um, and she was like, but you know, if you're an artist, it's your job to go out into the world and find things that go together and put them together. That was like one of the most uh, influential statements I think I heard in my entire life because, and it really didn't hit me at the time. But the next store I went into was a fabric store and I found some, uh, I found some fur that I really liked and some shiny fabric that I really liked. And I was like, I'm gonna make a reversible vest out of this. I have no idea how to make clothes, but um, you know, I'm an artist and I found things that I want to go together. Sanji Don. So I'm going to put them together. So I did. I bought the fabric and I figured out how to make a vest and I made my first piece of clothing and it was a crazy snowball effect from there, which I will continue in the next video because we just opened two boxes and got two sweet alt arts. Wow. This set's pretty fun to open. I'm really excited to open this in English because we're going to get so many hits per box. I am a dentist. I can't end without doing a dental tooth tip. My dental tooth tip to you would be don't wait until your teeth hurt to go to the dentist. Usually when your teeth hurt, it's like too late. Most of the stuff that is going wrong with your teeth that will become a problem. A lot of it's restorable and preventative before it hurts. A lot of time, once it starts hurting, you usually need more than just a filling or, you know, even root canal sometimes you just need to get the tooth pulled and that sucks don't let that happen your teeth are really really useful because eating is so much fun and you should be able to do it your whole life comfortably thank you gozaimasu thank you gozaimasu and i'll see you guys in the next one next week where we continue this story about my pants and cards and whatever it is jana mata